Hello everyone, it's Mary and today I'm finally filming my October wrap-up and October was a great reading month for me. I don't know if it was because there was a readathon going on, uh, the autumn readathon, and I just felt like I had more time to read and I managed to finish seven things, so I think that's pretty above my usual average, uh, which is of four books a month. So yeah, let's just get into the books that I read. I will start with the book with the lowest rating, Sanctuary by William Faulkner. So this is my first Faulkner book and I have to say I was quite disappointed with it. I had high expectations going in just because I know that he is a very uh, well-known and well-loved um, author. So the story talks essentially about a kidnapping. Um, the kidnapping of Temple. She's 17 years old and she's the daughter of a lawyer, so she's living kind of an upper-class um, life and she gets involved in a bad business with her boyfriend. They go into this country house to get alcohol and then things start happening and a murder is involved, so bad things, just a bad crowd really. And the story is told from the perspective of, um, of a lawyer mainly, the lawyer that takes up the case of the um, murder actually, but also the case of the kidnapping as things start to unfold. It is also told from the perspective of Temple. Some of the chapters are from her point of view. Yeah, I think things are pretty foggy in my mind at the moment because my main problem with this book um, was not really the plot that I didn't particularly enjoy um, as well, but it was the writing style that really didn't um, click with me. And I don't know if it is for lack of context or maybe uh, it went a little bit over my head. I know that Faulkner is not an easy author, but I also know that this is supposed to be one of his um, more readable works, so I'm, I would be kind of worried going into more of his um, books. It was all okay until we reached a key point in the narration and then everything just was very confusing and jumbled and that was really frustrating because um, up until that moment maybe the narration was very linear and then everything was a mess and I couldn't quite understand what was happening in that precise moment and I also didn't feel like the prose was that beautiful but that's just my opinion of course and I would love to hear your thoughts if you liked this book and if you suggest me picking up some of his other works that maybe could be better than this one. Anyway, I gave it two stars, so. The next book that I'm going to talk about is Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend um, Warner. This book was published in 1926, but it actually feels very um, contemporary in a way, and I thought the writing style was very engaging. It talks about um, Lolly, or L Laura Willows, and she is a spinster. She ends up living with her father after her two brothers are married off um, each and when her father dies she starts living as it is supposed to um, with one of her brother's family so she becomes the aunt of, of everybody basically and she really is not able to lead life for herself and that's really the essence of of the book and I feel like reading the blurb I knew more things that I would have wanted to know before going into the book because then you kind of read with the expectations of you know, of some things to be happening and it, this book is not very plot based, there's not a lot of things happening really, it's more of an exploration of one's character, of one's sense of self, which I think is very important, so I really really enjoyed the way in which she gradually becomes more aware of what she really wants and decides that it is not too late to live uh, the life that she wanted to to be living in the first place. She really takes interest into the quietness of nature and landscape and just being in contact with those elements really and her inner self as well and I thought this this was brilliant. You know, such a pleasant read and quite eerie, kind of magical. I would definitely recommend this one, especially during, you know, October, November months. Um, I give it four stars. Another book that I gave four stars to was The Gustav Sonata by Rose Tremaine. I talked about this book in my Autumn Readathon wrap-up, so I'm going to leave a link um, to that wrap-up down below. I'm not going to talk extensively about this book here, but this book is set in Switzerland, uh, kind of revolving around the, the Second World War, and the main protagonist is, is um, Gustav. 
and it really explores the relationship with Gustav and his mother and Gustav with Anton that is a boy that he meets when he's five years old and yeah would definitely recommend this one as well. And then another book that I finished during the Autumn Readathon, so again I'm just going to um, mention, is The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis. And this book was great. I give it four and a half stars, although I'm kind of thinking of adding one more star to it, but I have to, you know, I have to think it over uh, for a little while, but I just thought that this book was brilliant, um, especially the writing style. A 100% recommend this book, it was great. And I read um, a little tiny book that is Eric by Sean Tan and I bought this book for a friend of mine, it was a present for her, but I wanted to read it, you know, beforehand. I knew that it was going to be um, a great book. I never read Sean Tan, so this is my first one, but I heard nothing but great things about him and I'm especially interested in the graphic novel, the silent graphic novel that is The Arrival. I kind of went uh, blindfolded here, but I'm very pleased with this choice for a gift because it's just a cute little novel. I really loved the, um, the art and it took me two minutes, so I feel kind of cheating counting this as, as something that I read, but it warms your heart and it talks about Eric, who is a very peculiar foreign exchange student, and he talks about diversity and acceptance, and I just, I just loved it, so five stars for that one. Anne of Green Gables by L. M. Montgomery, and I adored this book so much. I think uh, mostly everybody is familiar with the story, but Anne is an orphan and she gets adopted by this family of two siblings, so um, Marilla and Matthew Cuthbert. They were not looking for her really, they were looking for a boy to help with the farm works. So them adopting Anne was a mistake, but they decide to keep her and the story really unfolds from there. The book was just, it had everything for me uh, that just clicked and I think this is a very comforting read as well because Anne is such a great character, she is very positive, very light-hearted uh, despite the life that she led before being adopted. It actually starts when she's I think 11 um, and it finishes when she's 17 and I didn't know it covered so much of her life. It is a beautiful kind of coming-of-age story and even if not much happens in it because it just talks about her living her everyday life, just being preoccupied with things that would that children would be preoccupied with. So um, I just thought it was brilliantly done and it was very, you know, compelling and interesting even if the plot was not rich of just adventures or things that were happening. I'm really eager to get to the um, the other books of the series because after this one, Ellen Montgomery wrote more books about Anne's life. So I really hope that it doesn't turn out to be a Little Women kind of sequel because that would break my heart and I have very high hopes for this one so please don't tell me um, if it's going to be in that way. I don't want to know because otherwise I wouldn't check out the other books. I talked about Little Women um, in a review that I'm going to link down below. I don't know why I associated these two books. You know, young girls, coming of age stories, sequels, something clicked in my mind. But anyway, five out of five stars would definitely recommend this one. And then the last book that I want to talk about is a reread for me. And um, I have the Italian version, so I'm just going to put this down and put a picture here. But it is uh, Poison by Chris Wooding. And this is a, um, a young adult novel. Although I would say, what happened with the lighting? This is so, I mean, it's so dark outside. I think it's raining. Um, but anyway, I'm sorry for the crazy lighting. And yeah, I, I was saying, what was I saying? I would say this book is good for, for people from, I don't know, 11 years old um, onwards. This book is great. And I remember reading this book when I was um, young. I was, I think, 14 when I read it. And it was one of my favorite books. But I really didn't remember a lot of the plot. I just remember that I was blown away by it. The story talks about Poison. She is a girl living in a swamp and she really lives a very dull, boring and also dangerous life because life in the swamp is not great. Uh, everybody is just resigned to their um, destiny. But one day her little sister is taken away by the fairies and they leave in her place 
um, a changeling and Poison is determined to find her sister and bring her back. So her story really um, starts there and she really has loads of adventures but what I really liked about this book is that there is a lot of plot but also a lot of of deep meaning to it and I remember I was blown away by it when I was very young but this didn't happen this time around. I felt it coming really but it was amazing for different reasons. It really made me think about the themes that it explores and really how much we are the people that we are because of the books that we read or the books that we read when we were young. I mean, of course, we are the people that we are because of our experiences, because of our education, because of a lot of things, but of course the books that we read play a part in it. And this really put me face to face with the fact that maybe I think what I think because I read books like this when I was young and that really blew me away in a way. So I was like, oh my God, I do still think these things. But when did I start, you know, thinking them? Um, I don't know if I'm making sense here, but it's just, I adored this book to bits and I think it's perfect for, for, you know, for young boys and girls of that age. I really want to read more of Chris Wooding. I think he primarily writes young adult, but I don't care. Um, actually, I don't usually read young adult, but I would definitely read anything that he writes. So yeah, that was it for my October wrap up. I hope you enjoyed and please let me know if you read any of the books that I mentioned and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!